All right, today we have one of the biggest female rappers in the DMV. She's making a name for herself in a big way. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Pinky the Rapper. How you doing today? Welcome to Behind the Buzz. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing superb. So let's start off with the basics before we really like get into it. So where are you from? I'm from Southeast. What's it like living in Southeast and how has that impacted your music career in some type of way? Because we've seen a lot of artists come from your area, especially mm -hmm. like the 37th. You got No Savage. Uh, Shy Glizzy, all of them, Baby Jammo. Mm -hmm. So what part of Southeast and how is that? Is it like? Um, I'm from Parkland. Okay. So, you know, it's still Southeast. Um, it's ghetto. You got to <laughs> You just got to be built for tough. Like, you know, I'm very aggressive, I think, from growing up in Southeast. I see that in the music. Like, <laughs> in the music is very raw, but you don't carry that DMV sound at the same time. Yeah, no. No. Nah. Why you say yeah, not like that? Cause I, I feel like I, I definitely sound like myself. I definitely have my own sound and it's definitely not that. So do you feel like that music is no good? It's not gonna take you anywhere? Um, Honestly, I just don't think it works for me. I'm not gonna say it's not no good, but it's just not for me. Well, do you listen to artists that it, come from the DMV? Yeah, I listen to a lot of DMV artists. Like who? Um, <laughs> I listen to Sam Payne. Uh, I listen to Fat Trail. Mm -hmm. um, I listen to Primo Rice. Um, I listen to Malaysian though. Um, I listen to a lot of people. So what was your childhood like coming from Southeast? Because like we talked about before, you have that real raw sound. You said that you got to be tough. You know, you're aggressive. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in Southeast? Um, I had an amazing childhood. Um, I was raised by a single mother. So, you know, it's only so much you can get out of that, you know, mm -hmm. situation. But um, I feel like it just prepared me for prepared me for the real world. Like you gotta have tough skin in the industry. I feel like growing up I had tough skin. I'm very outspoken. Mm -hmm. I speak my mind. Like I don't hold nothing back. I feel some type of way, and I feel like me growing up in that environment, it, it just made you like you gotta stand on all ten. Do you still bring, talk to your friends from back in the day, or yeah. are they with you now, with not you this far in your career? Yes, I, I have a few friends that, you know, I grew up with. Okay. Everyone else, like, is there any people that got left behind during this process? Um, yeah. A few people got left behind. Why? Because you just can't take, you know, you outgrow people. And yeah. I feel like I outgrew a lot of situations. Any, I feel like friendship that, it's stagnant or we still in the same place we still fighting we still doing this like it's not the front for me i don't want to do that anymore and i think that you're just like a unique rapper in the sense that you don't use your sexuality to like push yourself further into the industry mm -hmm. is there a reason for that like i've seen photos where you're clean cut but at the same time we see stuff where you got you know a t-shirt on in the studio just going hard so what's your image and why do you choose not to go down that route um because i can actually rock I feel like the <laughs> girls that rap like that, there's really no other topic to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, you just you really don't have anything else to talk about. But I don't know. I just feel like that's just not me. Like, I'm not a super girly girl anyway. Like, I'm like a calm girl. Like, I wear skirts and, you know, shorts and stuff. I like to be sexy. But overall, like, I'm this how I dress is like my vibe. Mm -hmm. Super comfortable, super chill, laid back. So do you believe that women have an easier path into the industry than males do? Absolutely not. Why? Um, because I just feel like we are washed under a microscope. It's like they want to throw this girl power or this, you know, girls, girls thing. But when it comes to men, a lot of men don't like each other. A lot of, you know, men can't stand each other. But I feel like with women, they just, they want to categorize us and put all of us in this one box. So that makes it, it makes it a lot harder because then we be feeling like, oh, well, I can't say this or I can't do this because I don't want her to feel some type of way. I don't want to do this. So it's just, it'd be weird. Like, it'd be super weird. It's super harder. So that goes harder. against the grain where you're talking about, you know, just being real authentic and saying whatever you got to say. Yeah. It's like they want to, like, shadow us, like, to a certain extent. Like, oh, you can say this, but not too much. Or, you know, like, play nice or do this. But if I don't really care for a person, why I got, I got like this. And I've seen that. If you look at an artist like Glorilla, she started out, people saw her as the real raw, you know, the hood girl. And now, you know, she's been super duper, like, clean. They got her dressed up differently. She got, you know, the hair and everything. And she really lost touch with what originally got her to where she's at. Do you see yourself ever becoming, you know, a different side of Pinky? Or was this always the 
persona that you had? Um, I, I definitely don't see me um, having a different persona, but I do see me like calming it down because with age comes, you know, wisdom and growth. So me being my age now and then me, you know, in five years from now, I would pray that I'm still not, you know, acting the same or having some of the same mannerisms that I have right now. So. Yeah. So when you're moving down, you say you're going to get older, you know, is the music going to change? You know, you don't really talk about, you know, killing and spinning, you know, like a lot of these other DMV rappers do. Mm -hmm. um, is your music going to mature as you get older? Are you still going to have the same message, you know, of coming up from the hard, the dirt and the grind as you do now? Um, I feel like I feel like it's going to change, but it's not. I'm just going to have a lot more stuff to talk about. Like, OK, yeah, I feel like it's probably going to be the same. I'm just going to be rich. Just gonna be rich. And I can really send people to you. <laughs> so what's gonna be like? Is music the end all be all? Like there's nothing else you got lined up. If this doesn't work out, nothing else will. And it's not playing A B C D E F G. So that's it. Yeah, this is it. Mm -hmm. How long have you been at it, and how'd you start? Um, I've been rapping for at least like, I'm gonna say because now it's being 24, so I'm gonna say like five, six years now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just I started off rapping like. Just playing around, something that I never thought that I would just be super serious with it. Like I, I always been told, um, I got the gift to get from my mom. She always was like, you can put words together, you can talk yourself out of so many situations. And one day, just being with my cousin, just just playing around, it turned on the beat, and we always rapping, and I was actually good at it. So it was just like, shit, I should probably really stick with this and do this. And I did it. So now that you're here, where do you see yourself in the next three or four years? Um, in the next three or four years, I should definitely have a few plaques on my mother wall. Mm -hmm. I should definitely be um, having like a, a, a mentor and program for the girls that want to rap that's coming under me. Should def that should be fully established. So you thinking you're gonna have your own label? You know, be the head of the head of the top, bringing other women behind you. I wouldn't say label. I would say me prepping them to to go to label, but. To have my own label. Um, thank so God. what's the biggest lesson that you've learned so far on your journey? Um, the biggest lesson I've learned so far on my journey is um, everything is in person. You know, a lot of stuff is just business. Because if you pay attention to my music, I'm a, I'm a very emotional rapper. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I don't hide none, nothing like pain, me being upset, I don't hide none of it. But once you know, you you take a step back and you really get to learn the industry, you see that a lot of stuff is just business. It's like I, I may like you as a person, but business wise, you don't mix with me, and it be like that. Can you give us a story, an example where the business and the friends didn't quite mix? I don't have. A you don't have a story? <laughs> no. Oh man, I was hoping we we try. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you said that you started off, you know, you were just rapping, you know, on beats and whatnot. Did you have the foresight that you would be where you're at right now? No. You, you didn't? Mm -mm. I never felt like, it's like, when, I feel like when you speak stuff, you got to be super mindful because you really speak stuff into existence. Like my mom always told me like life and death lies in the power of the tongue. So the stuff that I was saying, like I wanted to do and I actually did it, it was just so crazy. Like I, ain't, I never thought that it would be like, oh, you really going to do what you said you was going to do. So when did you feel like, okay, I'm here now, like I got to start taking it seriously? And what was the plan before you actually took off? Um, I, I'm not even going to lie. I, I didn't have a plan. Like I just knew I wanted to rock. I didn't know which direction it was going to take me to. I didn't know like I was going to have a manager and then me and my manager was going to click and she was going to do all of this stuff because this is my first manager. Well, second. I'm going to say first. Um, this was my first manager for me to be rapping for like five or six years. So when I, when she came about and it just like stuff started going, that's when I was like, oh, this is a real thing. But it didn't set in for me until I went on AMP. And AMP is like a freestyling platform mm -hmm. based in the DMV. So I wrote it down in like one of my little journals. And when they like reached out to me, I was like, damn, like it's real. So you talked about this prior manager to the one that you have now. What's the story? Why, why don't you guys still work together? Um, it just didn't work. It just, you know, it just didn't work out for us how I wanted it to. Um, you know, I, I think 
people don't really understand the role and the job that a manager really has and how selfless you have to be. And a lot of people aren't ready for that task. Okay. And so we, we see Miss Debbie. I was talking to her. She's the one that got you in here. Um, what has she meant to you and what has she done um, for you so far in your music career? And what's the relationship like? Um, she's done a lot. Our relationship is very personal and business. Um, it's both. Um, we just been going hard since I met her. She's just went hard for me. Like, ain't hold back. If I ask her to do something, she get it done. She done brought a lot of resources my way, a lot of, you know, good people into my life. So it's just been one of those relationships like that I never thought that I would have with a manager. Mm -hmm. So how did you guys anyway. meet? Um, we met because I, I always seen her in passing. Like, I always seen her in, like, different um like different events and stuff. I had seen her when I actually met her, she was pregnant. So, and she wasn't really like managing artists at the time, you know, she was just still doing her thing. And I just kept seeing her and I kept seeing her in the situation that I was um, in prior to her, they had um, a relationship. And like when I record, I don't like people in the studio. Right. So I would put everybody out and just keep hurting. And they'd be like, well, why are you only keep her? And it's just like, I don't know. She just gave off this energy like she cared. Like the person that I was with prior to her, he would want me to do like 12 songs in one session. And from when she came around, she used to always be like, listen, if you do two good songs, it's great. Because it's not about quantity. It's about quality. Right. You can make these 12 songs and these 12 songs don't go nowhere. They just sit. Versus you had these two songs that's actually good songs and you can move around with them. So when she gave me that like insight, it just made me feel like, oh, damn, she really cares. She's really paying attention. She's really see how that shit is super overwhelming for me. So what, what else has come that has been an obstacle for you so far in your music career? I mean, we've seen you at the, I believe it was called Summerfest mm -hmm. with uh, Fat Trail, Big Flock, all of them. Mm -hmm. Like, first of all, how did that feel like? How did you get on that stage? And what, do you get nervous when you're doing these things? Um, well, it came about because my, my manager is actually a, a part of like a, a major piece of the DMV Summer Jam mm -hmm. whole thing. So of course I'm going to be on it. But right. um, it was an amazing, like it was an amazing experience. I just feel like, again, me being emotional, I let something that nobody really had control over you know, upset me over something, you know, mm -hmm. just something super small, but it was great. Like to see a lot of artists come out, a lot of artists really like be grateful to be in them stages was, um, was great. And we seen you with like, oh, I'm sorry, were you about to say something? I was, I was trying to think what else you had. Oh, I was about to say, we seen that, you know, Big Flock, Real Black, they've been some big supporters for you. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you meet them? And what have they, what is the relationship like with you guys? Um, most rappers that you see me around, I have like a genuine relationship. Just me being me, like again, you know, my prior situation, that's his manager. So it's like, we're all tied to each other some way, somehow. Like we're gonna always run into each other, see each other, but me and Flock really have like a, a personal relationship as well, for sure. What is Big Flock like as a person? Cause I see him, <laughs> he's got the face tattoos, but at the same time, when I see him, you know, on the internet, he seems like kind of kind of goofy a little bit. And he jokes. Yeah, he would hate to hear me say, like he funny. He hate like I'm I'm not funny. I don't be playing like that's really his personality. Yeah. He's a um beautiful soul, beautiful man inside. Super. When you get to know him, you'll know like oh he's like super like. Cool, super loving. So he just playful. He just want you know have fun. Okay. That's what it's about. So we've noticed that a trend with these DMV rappers. You see artists like No Savage. You know he's locked up. Um, Baby Jamo locked up. Uh, what do you have to say about these people from our area going down these paths? And what are you doing to prevent yourself from getting caught in these type of situations? You know, because a lot of times people don't remove themselves from the life that they were living prior to the music industry that they're now in? Um, I would just say, first, freedom in. Secondly, mm -hmm. it's hard. Like, it, with, with any, you know, habit or with, with, with any, like, you used to you used to doing something, like, it just don't change overnight. So just because now you're a rapper, you, you, you knee deep in it and you get signed, I just don't expect you to just throw away the, throw away the street life tomorrow. Okay. Like, it don't just happen that fast. And I think uh, that's what a lot of people think you know once they get this money to 
tomorrow they should be packing up and moving to Beverly Hills like they tied to it a lot. It's something a lot of stuff be deeper than what people think. So okay. it's it's just not one of those things that's just like an overnight. So what are your sets of rules when you're moving around, you're doing shows? Like there's gotta be some protocol that you keep uh when you're doing different things and you know, performing and interviews, like what kind of rules do you have for yourself? Personally, I feel like they aren't my rules. They're definitely my manager's rules. If I could stay the whole time, I would stay. But she like, no, we're gonna do what you gotta do, we leaving. Like okay. so it's like well, I don't even she don't even give me room to even put myself in certain situations. Like, all right, we done here, let's go. Okay. All right. So I seen a video on Instagram. I think we talked about this before. Um you were you were in the studio. It was like a blue light. You were sweating. He's like, I don't want to be here. I want <laughs> I want Don Julio and I want to go to Pound Town. So that's what you hey. That's what you said. So we go. We can know. But so what's your type of man? Like what's it like getting in a relationship with Pinky the Rapper? Are people intimidated by you? Yes. Getting in a relationship with me, I'm a war man. You can't do nothing wrong. Yeah. I'd be so ready to block and cut off and remove and it's just like it's different because. It's like, I'll never really know if you really like me because you really like me or you really like me because of who I am. So it's mm -hmm. like now I'm trying to like figure that out. But as far as that whole session, I was already a little tipsy. So I just be talking. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, take another. If you... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't really nothing like that. I just be, I'm a big shit talker. I talk a lot of shit. So has there been a time when you chose wrong, where you made the wrong decision about who you're going to be associating with as far as a relationship, maybe in the industry, where it kind of came back to bite you in the back? I think I'm a, I think I'm a, a magnet for the wrong niggas. I think that's all I have to act, honestly. Why is it? I like toxic. You like toxic men? I do. But you get upset when they... When they're toxic. It's, 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 I don't know. It's like, it's like the, it got to be like the right amount of, you know, toxicity. Not too much, not too little. Just the right amount. I just found the right amount, but I don't think I understand. You need to it can we break elaborate. This? So yeah. it's like I want you to be I'ma say obsessive but not possessive. Look, so you can be on me, but to the point where you're telling me, Oh no, you can't wear that, you can't go there. Now we now we're doing too much. But if you threaten me like just a little bit, not really no actions behind it, that's what I like. I can see that you are an aggressive like <laughs> So I, like. I feel like it's definitely like you got to have the right one to mm -hmm. like handle you and your because there's a lot that comes with you. Everybody yeah. sees you yeah, uh, yeah. on the man side. I can see that being, you know, kind of intimidating or problematic, you know, okay. insecurities. Um, if you pay attention to my music, I always say like I like big homies. I like older guys. So I'm, I'm a, a young nigga couldn't do nothing but tie my shoes to me. I don't even put myself in situations like that. Mm -hmm. cause most times they can't really handle like the the attention and all of that that come with it. So I don't need to be dealing with some type of guys, but I like older men. Like I like men. Let me be clear. Men. No boys. Not, not boys or young niggas. I like men. Okay. So let's get back to the rap music. Mm -hmm. So I see, especially you see a woman, like maybe they're on DMV hoods and news, right? <laughs> and they're talking about, Oh, I just shot. I just spun and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But we don't believe that that's really what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell me the stories in your music. You don't really, you don't really get too far into it, but talk to me about that past life that you had before getting into music. Um, you don't gotta incriminate yourself, just. <laughs> nah, yeah. I ain't never been to jail, never been nothing. Yeah. I'm just like it's, it's. I'm not gonna say it's not no past life. Like I feel like as a human, we all have been like rebellious at one time. Mm -hmm. We did something that somebody didn't want us to do, but. I ain't never really been on nothing too crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, fighting, yeah, but I ain't been on nothing too crazy. Like, I ain't never set a nigga up or never, I ain't never did no crazy shit like that. Well, what got you in the fight? Why was you fighting? My mouth, probably. I'm from Southeast. It's like, we all talk with aggression. So it was like, even if you don't mean it like that, I was in the studio last night, situation like that happened. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. But I'm learning. As, as I get older, I know a lot of people don't even really mean how they be coming off. It's just... You expect, you look at me and you see that I'm going to be a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. So you already feel like I got to come like this, but you don't really, you know, you don't really got to act like that. I saw an interview that said executives don't want to mess with people from the DMV for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. They're scared of us. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do business with us. And them. I can see that. You know? I can see that. Speaking of the DMV, though, there's a lot of janky promoters. Yeah. A lot is. of uh, 
shady business going on? Has there been a time when somebody has, you know, done you wrong? Yes. My first show ever, I did a show, like, when I first started rapping. I was probably, like, three months pregnant. And he had made, like, um, I can't even remember his name because I definitely would have said it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I did the show, and he made it seem like it was a... It was like a competition, whoever bring the most people, whoever win, or da, 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 and I feel like I packed the house out. Later on in that week, I'm like, okay, so where's my two my two hundred and fifty dollars at? And he like, oh, I just felt like, you know, you had a little stage fight with you, but that don't matter. Like it doesn't matter. I still deliver, I still packed it out. Fuck the story, he ain't wanna give me my money. And I just felt like that was super janky because I felt like I came, I delivered, I did what you wanted me to do, I promoted the event, all of that. So he probably ain't having it in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So does that make you like hesitant to work with other people with the, in the DMV? No, because now I have I have a, a actual team, so that it goes straight through them. So it's like if I don't even talk to people in my DMs, you want to do anything, I'll reach out to my manager because that's what she, you told me. Y'all see, yeah. exactly. That's what I was about to say she's gonna all like she's already equipped for certain. She know when it don't even look right, so I don't even be having time for that. So if it don't get to me, you're nine times out of ten janky or she just don't like how something look. So how do we check out? Um, I'm quite sure she did her research. I'm quite sure she probably looked at your page. My manager is definitely a big homie. So even if even if she don't scale me, I know she done made some calls like, oh, who's this or this, this, and that. So oh, good. That's probably how. Glad probably. that we checked out. Mm-hmm. So let's go over this verse. <laughs> I should have let bitches have it. I should have smoked them bitches like a maverick. This is from your song, Still Pippin. Mm-hmm. So you telling me, we talked about women in the industry portraying this image. Mm-hmm. Um, and you talked about, was there a time when you were active? You said, oh, you never, I ain't really done nothing like that. <laughs> but you just told me that you were smoking bitches. <laughs> so, <laughs> double entendre. Okay. Um, I said, I should have let bitches have it. I should have smoked them bitches like a maverick. Mainly like... Bitch, I should have smacked the shit out of you when I seen you, but I didn't. I let it go because I'm trying to grow as a person. That's what that means. Not like literally like shooting. I don't want to see nobody die. No, will I fuck you up? Yes, but death, no. I don't. I don't want to see that. Either. So who is this verse? Who is this written for? Um, <laughs> nobody that, well, in particular. No, no, wait a it's nobody. Like it's when I rap. I rap about like past situations or my friends probably like I rapped about I rap from everybody's point of view I pay attention I'm I'm super observant so it necessarily don't gotta be me I'm just speaking for them you got come on you gotta give me a little something come on Pinky. nobody nobody I don't, I, like and I don't want to jinx myself but I don't run into situations like that like mm-hmm. I'm you see me I'm like not even saying it like that I got some weight on me and all of that like I'm lying I did just go through a situation like that but my manager probably not gonna want me to talk about it so <laughs> I don't go through stuff like that. And, you know, I don't be, I just, I be rapping off of third person. So do you get mad when you see women that are rapping like that, but don't really live that life? Or a better question is this, is there anybody that you kind of compare yourself to? That's like the measuring stick. Like, okay, they did this. I got to do this next. Yeah, Nikki. Nikki? Yeah, I'm a barb. That, that, you going auto, you shooting for Nikki. Yeah, Not even nobody Nikki. in the local scene. Nobody. No. You think you're number one here? I do. I do. I do think I'm number one. I respect you. You're supposed to say that. <laughs> you're supposed to say that. So what's the, you're saying that you're going for Nikki. Mm-hmm. What do you think Nikki has over you? Do you think that you can go head to head with her in the verses? Nikki got longevity. A lot of things that a lot of women don't have. Like a lot of, a lot of women come on the scene and be like viral moments. Nikki is super like, she's versatile. She got range. That's the same thing I want to bring to my own career. Like different cadences. I can switch my flow up. I can do any type of, you know, be any type of genre that I want to do. The girl's here is not doing it. Okay. I, I will say that you are definitely, all the women that we have here are really talented that are doing the BTB. Uh, Mia Love, we're talking to Beat of Venom. She goes crazy. Mm-hmm. I think you guys really, you guys are stepping away from the narrative of what DMV rap is supposed to be, especially from a female perspective, mm-hmm. you know? Um, my next question here, um, I think our viewers would like to know what is the craziest hood story that you have? My craziest hood story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's your craziest hood story? Why, why they, do you want to know that? Or they want to know? A little bit of both. both. <laughs> <laughs> um, you say you come from southeast. You know, you said it's ghetto. So 
I got a lot of a, a lot of crazy little stories. Why y'all don't want to know something else? Ask me who I'm who I'm dating right now. Cause I'm dating a rapper. You dating a rapper? Mm hmm Okay, who's that? <laughs> I'm playing. I just knew you was gonna bite the bait. I ain't dating no damn rapper. I hate rappers. Okay. You just said that she was talking about a man and you want a man's name. Like, yeah, but he not ain't no and I'm not dating no rapper still. Ew. So why is that? You feel like they they not who they say you are? Like why are you not dating? I just feel like I'm that? a rapper and I be around these rappers. So it's like they don't have nothing that attracts me to them. Like most any rapper you see me around is definitely like bro, like it's my real bro, my real friend. I'm just not I like the men behind the scenes. I like the men that tell the rappers what to do. Okay, fair enough. So my last question before we get into the music, really get into the music, okay? I know you've been waiting for me to get into the music. But I'll be remiss if I didn't say this. So last year in 2023, DC had 274 homicides. What do you think is causing all this, you know, violence in the district? And do you believe that music could be a contributing factor to it? Um, I feel like yes and no. Um, I feel like the biggest part of these homicides is it's no love. Like there's no love in people's heart. Like it's like people get in tour with you and the first thing they want to do is kill you. They don't mm -hmm. want to talk. They don't want to have no resolution. So I just feel like a, a, a pride. A, it's, it's a lot of pride out here. Like. I can bump you and, and and me saying sorry or, or excuse me still not enough for you. It's like you want me to lay on the ground and wipe your shoe off and that's what I'm not going to do. Right. But if I got to do it to make it home to my son, I'm going to do it because that's all I care about. But I think it's a lot of pride, like it's a lot of hate, enough love here. So that's the second time you mentioned you were, you're a mother. So mm -hmm. what's it like raising your son uh, in the mix of being a rapper? I feel like that's two different lives you live in. Uh -huh. It's an amazing feeling. Like my, my son's three and he's just now like really fully like understanding and grasping who I am. I was just laying with him and he was like, mommy, I know your other name. I said, it's my other name. He's like Pinky the rapper. So I feel like Pinky as a mom and, and Pinky and Pinky as Pinky the rapper are two totally different people. Like with my son, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm gentle with him because I definitely don't gentle parent. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that is. But it's, it's, it's just, it's different. Like that's my safe space. Okay. Great feeling to be a mom. I love being a mom. So let's I switch. have seven kids. Seven right. kids? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the kiki wide of rap. But no no, no little boys, straight men. <laughs> no little boys. All men, big dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Big mm -hmm. So let's switch gears to the actual music. So you have released nine singles since 2022, and you have taken off since then. So do you plan on releasing any longer projects? Like, where's the album, the EPs? <laughs> Is, there, have, is this strategic? Yes, it's, it's definitely strategic. I have enough songs to probably do like an album and two EPs, two albums, two EPs. Like I have the songs, but it's all about timing. It's all about structure. Um, my team is definitely like want to do what works best for me in a moment, in the now. So as of right now, I don't have a project out, but I will. I Before 2024 is over, I will definitely have at least three projects out. And who's the artist that you would like to be featured on your project? Um, if you could. Somebody within reach. <laughs> it's so funny because I have a lot of features that just, you know, just ain't come out yet. Okay. Um, but... I would say I am North Thief is one of like one of my main features that I just really feel like I want him on an EP or or album. I love I'm North East. Um, who else? I don't know. I like I'm North East. That's a good name though. That's a good name though. So there's one thing I forgot to mention uh, about the DMV Summer Jam. Mm -hmm. So you performed there. You were you know you rocked out. So I want to know what it was like backstage. What was talk to me? Walk me through that day. You pull up to the venue. Then what happened? Um, I pull up to the venue. The the media, nonstop. You you. As soon as you get to, I got off the, the truck. The microphone. I'm like yeah, my you feeling the DMV summer jam? That day was like one of those hot, one of those hot, sweaty like. <laughs> working days it's like you ain't come here to play you know play time after you hit the stage but it was it was a great feeling it was it was cool for the most part for me like i ain't you know enjoy myself so this is my personal question mm -hmm. talk to me about the face tattoo the heart 
um, the face, <laughs> the face tattoo was an intrusive thought, but it just ended up on my face. Like <laughs> I thought about it and I just was like, damn, like I want a tattoo on my face and I just got it. And I just remember going home to my, my, my mother and she just was looking at me like awkwardly. And I'm like, girl, what? She was like, you really got a tattoo on your face? Like my dad didn't even know that it was real until mm. probably like, a, like I had it for like a year. So a few months ago, he like wiped my face and was like, oh, that's really a tattoo. I want another one, but I'm not going to touch my face. Okay. So. And I think it's cute. It had a little razzle dazzle. It, do, it does. It does add a little razzle dazzle <laughs> for sure. So my last question for you, uh, what is one piece of advice that you want to give to your son and one piece of advice that Miss Debbie has told you that's going to stick with you for a while? Uh, I'm going to do the first one. One piece of advice I would give to my son is that you will never be a rapper. <laughs> I'm not letting you be a rapper. You're not ever. the first person to say that. Yeah, I, I would never want my son to ever be in this this type of industry. Like, uh, he would never be a rapper. Um, and then one piece of advice advice that I would say that I got from Debbie is that everybody isn't your friend. Like, I don't care how friendly people come off, how nice people come off. Like, you, you're here to do a job. This is still a job. As fun as it is, this is still a job. Do your job and go on about your business because these people aren't your friend. They don't give a fuck. You can be hot right now, but in the next few months, they're going to be riding somebody else's wave. So I always keep that in the back of my mind, no matter what relationship I build in the industry. Like, yeah, you cool, but to a certain extent respect so lastly is there anything that we forgot to mention that you would like the people to know before we head out um and where can we find you on social media no i feel like i don't really want to try my business all like that so i loved every question and um you can just find me on all social media platforms at pinky the rapper p-i-n-k-y-t-h-a-r-a-p-p-e-r all right well thank you pinky for sitting down with us at behind the buzz best of luck to you and your music career thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you later. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah.